Hi, it's Professor Kim Nelson with the Druid Design Department. I'm doing, uh, continuing with our maquette tutorial for a cuff bangle. I've made this in Rhino. It's time now for me to um, refine it and finish the design in Painter. I don't believe I'll render this one, but I will draw it. Control A, Control G. And set the lines. This is a larger drawing, so I'm going to go 0.44 for the line thickness. So let me make sure I'm getting what I expect. Looks good. Export it. Make sure I have the high quality settings all around. And there we go. Coming into Painter. Uh, the largest canvas I can uh, work with for more layout would be a 7.5 by 10. I'm going to set this up so it's portrait. So it's 10 inches by 7.5. Then I'm going to go ahead and open that um, drawing. And the usual control A, control X, control W. And paste. Okay. So there is my drawing. And you can see it pretty much fills the page. I'm going to do my usual pixel scrambling. And I will clear the background. So select Control I, Control X. What's the border? Now, you can uh, you can tell my system is struggling with this. This is a lot of memory. It's a very large image. I have recording software going, um, so I'm just going to bring this into this image. And I'll scale it up. First, I'm going to see what all else I have running here. I can close out um, one of these. And that's really all I can do. So, mm -hmm. free transform this. And drag it out big. I can use this reference. And I'll save. Out of respect for the struggle my system is having, I don't want to lose this um, file. In case painter goes down. Alright, so here I have them set up. That's ten. And reference is going to go gel. And above the template and below the reference is my drawing layer. Okay. So I first thing I want to draw here, and I don't know how much of this I'll do, because um, you'll get the idea pretty quickly. Um, I want to really draw this medallion. That's probably the most difficult aspect here. Um, 
Unfortunately, I don't believe that this is a symmetrical pattern, or at least not entirely symmetrical. So, I need to take that template down and opacity a little bit. And lock it. Okay. You know, I'm at 75%. Um, zoom here. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and sketch out what I think. This should be. Now I didn't put the stones in. I didn't want to bother. And I do want a lot of green, and I do want the traditional paper. And just take a few. I don't really particularly care for this thing, so it's a little hard for me to say, okay, I'm drawing what they have the way they have it, but I will. sketching for now, so I'm not going to. And since I'm going to model these, I am, well, I would be modeling them, I'm not going to make each one unique, because it's going to take too long to model. Unless my client asks me to. And I would argue with them as to why they might want to do that. Now, because what happens here is going to depend a lot on how these two relate to each other as it wraps around, I'm going to do myself a kindness here. Once I've roughly figured this one out, I'll go ahead and copy and paste and rotate it around. I have some serious delay on the pen action because of the resources being used to record this movie. Painter does not like to share resources, so I am prepared for the painter to shut down on me at any time. So I will take a moment to save here. Yeah. Okay. 
So, save. Select this. Actually, we need to lasso select it. This kind of resource situation that may not go well. Um, yeah, I just lost it. I just lost it again. Okay, so copy, paste, rotate 180 degrees. sense of, of what I'm going to need to have here. Um, I need to have something come into here. The original has settings to take up some of the space. Uh, but uh, our version does not. I'm going to move this element in a little bit. Please feel free to fast forward. <laughs> Wish I could. Um, so, I think that that would give me a reasonably decent facsimile of what this design has going on. I think this should be more open here. Okay, and I think this should be spread here. Delete this to do um, painter the kindness of not having it. I have to keep track of a layer. Remember, every layer goes the entire distance of the canvas, so you double the file size every time you put a layer in. So I will draw these now a little more carefully. It would have suited me better to make those line thicknesses in Illustrator even heavier. So that, because I'm not going to want to draw on this tiny, tiny scale. I mean, I'm using a 4.8 brush for heaven's sakes. And on our earring project, I was using a 1.6 and drawing at 200% or 400% scale. And here I'm working not even at a lot at 100%. So that's an important strategy issue when you're going to develop this way. You're using a large object. You're going to want to use bigger brushes. So you're going to want to have a heavier line weight coming out of Illustrator. I would never go over 0.7. Obviously, I would have to really clean this up um, the way I'm working it, and I'm not going to do that for our tutorial. It would take too long. But I can clean it up enough that it's valid for what I want to do next. It's important that I keep track of where things go over and under, because in a minute, 
I'm going to have to draw those things a lot more attentively. In the three quarter view. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where, well, gee, if I modeled this in Rhino, I wouldn't have to draw any of it. But to model this in Rhino would take you a very long time. And this form is actually more suitable to a soft surface model than it is to Rhino. Rhino could do a good job, though. Okay. It would just be cleaner. Yeah, starting to find myself wanting to move to a smaller brush, so that's as much detail as I'm going to want to put in. I don't want to put in a smaller brush at this point. Now, to do a nice job with this, I'm going to want to use gel layers. And the challenge with that is going to be that this never had a white paper put behind it before I started drawing. So if I convert this to gel right now, the quality of my lines will change. And when I try and draw, it'll look bad. So I'm actually going to take my drawing right now and I'm going to drop it to canvas. Pick it up from the canvas and put it back where it was. Now I can take it gel. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste it. Do my 180. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put in a registration mark. I didn't do that when I was roughing it, but I do want to do it now. A mark that will let me know where to position it. That's good. that in. Okay. And because they're both gel, um, it works. It works fine. Come in here and do something with the way these come together. Now I'm with I need to go off of gel. So I'm gonna go to a standard layer for a minute. And okay, that's fine. That'll work for our purposes. I don't want to be over on this. So if I want this all to be one unit now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle around it, and I'm going to Control Alt C to select all the way to the canvas and Control V, and then I can throw these away. And if I turn my template back on and take this back to gel, I'm fine. Okay? So now I have this drawn 
in the front view or the top view. Um, other things in the top view, I would scallop the edge. You know, there are several things I would do. But for the purposes of our tutorial, I'm just going to work on this thing. Okay? So I want to have another copy of that over here. Just to make my life easy. In fact, what I want is I want a copy of it with the template underneath it. So, once again, Control or an R to select. Control H, uh, Control Alt C, Control V, and gel this. That'll give me the reference I need to draw this thing. And I now draw it on here. I look for distances between things. I look for where a notch might be. I do not draw too carefully. looking at negative spaces and trying to preserve them. Because I want this to look, you know, as accurate as I reasonably can get it. So. This negative space and that negative space look like they are pretty much the same. There's foreshortening involved, so there's a little bit of difference. That looks okay. I have this kind of parrot's head going on here. That I want to capture. its head and that little leaf form um, negative space. I'm going to have to do some compromising, which is why I'm not using a tiny pencil and being really fussy, because everything I draw might have to change. Um, Um, down here, I have this shape, and I can already see that I have foreshortening issues. And I'm drawing everything flat right now, because once it's drawn in flat, I can add the form. And I'm being really careful, or more careful, with the shapes that are closer to me. Because as it gets farther away from me, foreshortening is going to make everything suspect. But my consumer, my client, is going to expect there to be some relationship between this and their uh, design. So. shape happening in here. With lots of foreshortening associated with it. And as I move farther away from me, from my eye in this drawing, uh, the more the foreshortening will be a problem. I have a concern. I've been drawing on my reference. That's not good. Fine.
select this back out, cut it, paste it, regel it, and lock it. So I don't do that again. Okay, so I'm back here. All right, so keep drawing. Just glad I noticed that before. I was about to be overlapping, and I'm like, so I realized I might have a problem. Come here. This thing takes off. Comes very close and ends somewhere in there. I have this form coming in here. I have another form in here, and it comes right up and just kisses that corner. And you can see how the foreshortening is changing everything. That's okay. Um, there's an edge, there's a, there's a distance between the edge here. It'll be much thinner than what's shown here because of the foreshortening. comes out here. This comes in here. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything um, on that side. I'm most concerned right now with what's going on up in here. I don't want to spend any more time than I have to on it. Um, but I do have this shape the ones closest to me are the ones I'm going to get the most correct the ones farther from me I'm not going to worry about because of the foreshortening I think that represents that form pretty good, uh, pretty well. The um, little horn that goes off in this direction, um, tremendously foreshortened. So the end of it is just going to disappear. There's an overlap here. And that goes right off the edge. So there's some vagueness right there. And by trying to do something with it, I'm being nice. I'm not going to try and do anything more. I do think it's time to drop to a smoother paper. Because when I have to start fussing with detail, I don't want the big grain to get in my way. So there's that. This comes in and bites in here. This comes off. So these kind of fingers I can define well. See, I'm trying uh, to obey this. As best I can.
I wish I could make this faster for you. And once again, obviously, you can fast forward until you see me doing something other than moving a stylus around. That's enough for this side. Um, now I'm going to try and indicate some of what's going on over here in the scary areas. Um, once again, I'm looking at negative spaces primarily to try and get this right. This comes up a little higher on this side than it does on the other. It does something like that. Um, the one above it down and kisses this and comes in a little lower here a little ways away from that edge and does something like that um, the big finger here or the big branch it swoops down I don't know how far I'm going to see so I'll let that go for now coming back up over in here This finger is mostly on that side of the center line. I want my rough texture back. Here's that corner right here. And I've got this too far away. it's just going to disappear off the edge. Okay, um, over on this side, um, I have this large tendril. It's going to come up into here and disappear somewhere over there. And I have to um, capture this next piece here. There is a distance between it and that one that I have to preserve. But these distances are going to get rapidly foreshortened. So this comes into somewhere like this. I have another one. That means that this dropping of the belly on this curve is actually about there in my drawing. This comes out, and it never does reach close to the edge there. I'm going to let it just disappear off the edge. Something like and then I'm going to lose it off the edge. And this comes up into here, and I'm going to lose it off the edge. 
Okay, so that's basically it. What I want to show you now is how to make it sculptural, because that's why we have the thickness on the maquette. So now I will go back to a smoother paper. And a more modest brush size. And I will start. By the way, this is not a gel layer. I'm on a default layer now on top, which will allow me to paint over the top of the maquette. There's a thickness here. So I'll start by drawing this. As if it were a cutout. And this will change things because once you see it with the thickness involved, you start to, I want to start to push it more the other way, which is fine, but I have to move my thickness lines over, which just means that this top detail ends up being more foreshortened and more thinned than I thought it did. Um, the same thickness would be in here. Okay. Now, some of this detail is lower than others, so this one might go almost all the way down to the ground. In order to allow this one to overlap it, and there would actually be a corner where they meet. same thing here. There's going to be a thickness. Um, I can kind of decide where I want to put that thickness. Not completely. I'm going to split it a little bit. Take some of the thickness off this side and take some of the thickness off of here. The edge, you don't really see any thickness because just the way it's foreshortened in the perspective, this doesn't really do anything here. It's just that little teeny edge of thickness. Which is still there, but it's barely there. So we're not going to... I'm not going to worry about capturing it too much. This has the thickness. At least towards the front it does. Now since it's tucking under the other detail, it probably has very little thickness in here. Because truthfully it's it's almost just on the surface of, of the cuff allow this to overlap it nicely. 
this also is going to come in low to be overlapped but it's going to get some thickness here and I hope you can see that by doing this I am creating a sculptural effect this feels like it's sculpted into the top this has thickness certainly at the point it may reduce as it comes up underneath this main vein but it has some thickness here we have some thickness here okay. and you can go crazy doing this kind of thing but if you just keep allowing there to be this sense of depth in the material. This branch obviously has to bite into this branch. Now the thickness be visible there. Same thing here. This one has to bite in. So let there be a little thickness there. The edge of this is obviously not going to be a straight line. I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, So the cuff itself is going to be restored right there. Okay, so you can see that you have these details now forming the contour or affecting at least the contour of the cuff. Which is cool. That's what you want. So that it feels like actual sculptural detail on a surface. And you can see as I increase, uh, as I clean up some of the original box, getting the feeling of sculptural detail placed on the top of that cuff okay it takes time it does um, I'm going to cut this video here uh, this would take me easily uh, a couple of hours to draw out properly this design um, and to do a couple of hours on video makes no sense I'm not getting paid and um, you know you don't need to see that what you do need to see is, is the process. Okay, thanks so much for watching.